Okay, and with that, I will introduce Mike Vogel, the Housing and Environmental Health Specialist at Montana State University, who's going to be speaking first. And also, Milt Geiger is on the line, and he's the Extension uh, Energy Extension Coordinator at University of Wyoming. And I think Mike should have control of the screen and be able to start. Okay, well, good afternoon for most of you. Good morning still for... Uh, you know, uh, if there's anyone from Alaska or Hawaii on the uh, on the line here, uh, 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 we want to uh, just walk folks through what uh, E3A is all about. We have a, just a couple of very very simple goals. Uh, uh, we do recognize that some people have been uh, utilizing E3A for some time, so we want to provide you with some great exciting. Uh, uh, updates that uh, Milt will really be honing in on later on in the presentation. Some new resources, some new services, and then uh, if you've not been with E3A before, obviously we want to introduce you to you know uh, E3A. For those that are familiar, uh, my portion is uh, going to be a good review. There'll be a, a quiz that we'll send to you to see how well you did. So. Uh, uh, for those that are not aware of E3A, this has been a, a, just a wonderful partnership between Montana State University Extension and the University of Wyoming Extension uh, uh, since uh, 2010. Uh, and uh, it's just really been a very, very successful venture, a great partnership between the two uh, institutions and other institutions now that have uh, you know, jumped on board with uh, with E3A, and, uh, and and that's one of the things that uh, from the get go we really want to encourage folks that uh, you know have not had an opportunity. They may not have the capacity to uh, have uh, their own uh, develop their own uh, extension energy materials and so forth. This is a great opportunity to jump on board uh, with us. Uh, uh, because the materials that we're going to be showing you certainly uh, have been developed with national implementation in mind and customization in mind. Just the purpose very quickly of E3A, it's really uh, uh, an opportunity to enhance extension energy capacity. You know, uh, uh, Montana, like many states, has not always had capacity to deal specifically with the broad area of energy education, and uh, whether that be in home energy, uh, uh, agricultural energy, you know, often that uh, is a part and piece of someone's responsibilities. So recognizing that fact, you know, uh, uh, we often in Extension do a great job of uh, uh, borrowing from other uh, states that uh, have materials to uh, make budgets work, build capacity, and that's really what this is all about, is uh, dealing with specifically with uh, the design of extension you know, material for outreach and education. It's designed for extension people by extension people, and uh, it focuses on uh, conservation, efficiency, and small renewable energy systems as it says there, for farm, ranch, and home. It is certainly, uh, uh, we see it as a complement to the great things that many of you have been doing, programs that you've established in your state, uh, you know, uh, uh, activities that you've been involved with. Many of you perhaps uh, have uh, participated uh, in the e-extension communities of practice. Uh, those um, uh, dealing with energy, the farm energy and home energy. Well, this uh, is not a replacement in any way, shape, or form. It's a complement to those, uh, uh, those initiatives. Uh, the energy uh, uh, summit that was held last year in Colorado uh, uh, to complement those efforts that were highlighted and to build upon those. And uh, there's another fun acronym out there, E3, uh, that deals with economy, energy, and environment that also has a very strong energy component. Matter of fact, one of the webinars that uh, we're going to be offering uh, deals with uh, agricultural energy audits that is uh, funded through the E3 
initiative. And the E3 in that particular case uh, is economy, energy, and environment, uh, which is a multi-federal uh, initiative that you'll hear about uh, some other time. But in any case, uh, we want to complement and highlight and point to all the good things that people are doing. Uh, so a program that is developed by extension people for extension, you know, folks, uh, uh, it's a, a set of materials and services that uh, really helps to uh, the extension educator at all levels. You know, some of those like Milt that, uh, you know, that's his, uh, that's his job. Uh, he, uh, he rocks and rolls with, uh, uh, with energy education. Others may not, but if that is a, uh, a need in your community, in your state, uh, you know, this is a, uh, a toolkit. It is a program that can quickly bring you up to speed on uh, um, these different uh, topics. And uh, uh, if you're not comfortable in presenting, it gives you tools that you can share with others that in your community that might be able to, uh, uh, to help you out. It helps uh, uh, to assess. Hey, Mike. Local... Yes. Uh, I hate to interrupt, but I guess people aren't seeing your slides. So maybe we can switch over and kind of take things out of order and let Milt um, take the reins. And I'll come down and see if I can help you figure out what's going on? Sure. Okay. Uh, Milt, you're okay with that? I think you might be muted, Milt. Milt? He's on mute. Oh, sorry, that's my fault. Milt, can you hear us now? Can we hear you now? Yes, I can. Okay. And I suspect you can hear me as well. Yeah, okay. I will pass this over to you, and hopefully we'll be able to see your screen. Okay, my screen has changed, but instead of the intro slide, I'm now just seeing black. I am seeing the, uh, the state of E3A. Okay. Okay, looks like people can see it now. So um, I'm going to step away from the headphones for a little while and see if I can go help Mike. All right, well, thank you for that. The joys of uh, improv here, and once again, some of the joys of technology. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. I know many of you as Mike was uh, discussing, are familiar with the Exploring Energy and Efficiency and Alternatives curriculum, and I wanted to touch briefly on what's coming along new, some new projects we have, and where are the partnership's going. Once again, to get tools to natural resource and field educators so they are empowered to teach about energy extension. Ever so briefly, the first thing that new is, yes, dollar signs. Uh, Western SARE, uh, Sustainable Agriculture Research and Education, uh, was kind enough to grant University of Wyoming and Montana State another professional development program grant. And through this funding, we're agreeing to expand and enhance some of the tools that are already available for the E3A curriculum. This is a two-year project. It kicked off last fall. As was alluded to earlier, things have changed the, uh, with uh, Tories hiring up at Montana State. So we took a little pause with the evolution of the grant, but now we're progressing in earnest with some new tools available uh, through the curriculum. And the joys, any of you that have gone out and got external funding, you know, hey, with funding comes deliverables. So by August 2015, and folks can hold me to that, there will be new folders. And since we didn't get the uh, privilege of Mike's presentation uh, to preface this, the folders, by the way, are what contains the individual content for the E3A curriculum. So for instance, a folder on micro hydro, solar thermal, and the like. So we'll create new folders. Media resources will come up with distance support, you know, such as today when we need distance support on our webinar. We'll also have some website enhancements that I can talk about briefly. And we'll continue to offer additional webinars and some on-site trainings. 
All right, so what are the new folders? For those of you that may have a E3A box sitting next to you, you know that we have existing folders related to oh, solar electric, small wind, anaerobic digesters, biodiesel, micro hydro, home efficiency, farm efficiency, and others. Well, we're going to add some new folders. And the things we're looking at are items that we've heard from the field that these would be useful in uh, certain educational efforts. So one is direct use geothermal. That's a very site specific resource obviously, but that's where you have production of uh, warmer hot water or even steam and you can use that in industrial process, uh, agriculture. We probably won't get up to the level of uh, generating power from these, but we'll talk about some application where you can use this energy resource. And our friends in Idaho, New Mexico and other places are already very familiar with that. Another one is my favorite, uh, one of my favorite renewable energy technologies, the ground source heat pumps, also known as geothermal heat pumps. Some people want to classify this as an energy efficiency improvement, others a renewable energy technology, but it's actually just a very efficient way to heat and cool structures. So we'll have an entire series about that. Another one is irrigation efficiency. We recognize that many field educators directly involved in ag, if you go to operations, that have a significant irrigation and water pumping, it is almost always the largest energy user on that operation, so we wanted information specifically on irrigation. We recognize that we want to have tools available specifically for youth to build on the existing uh, youth uh, small wind component. There will also be a youth solar component that will come out very shortly. Another ag-specific application is solar-powered livestock watering. And also we'll have wood heat because that is still the most common method of renewable energy use in most American homes. And we want to talk about some advances that come along beyond just the simple wood stove and fireplace that, that we're used to. So when are these promised by? By fall 2014, I promise you many of them will be sooner. A couple of them are sitting on my desk right now waiting for final edits. And they'll come out in the nice shiny glossy format of the other E3A curriculum, although with this grant, we're going to emphasize on delivering these tools electronically and we're going to print less of these. You can certainly still order the folders themselves, so you've got uh, something to contain these in, but we're going to make sure that everything is available up on the website. Other thing with new folders, recognizing that there's a tremendous amount of expertise spread across the country at the various land-grant institutions. And we're having other partners build some of these folders. Right now, for instance, New Mexico State University has agreed to supply their excellent content for solar-powered livestock watering systems, and we'll bring that into the E3A format. And the University of Nebraska, with a long experience with irrigation energy efficiency, is, has agreed to provide their expertise to create that folder. So we'll get a variety of authors recognizing that with these diverse technologies, some of our land-grant institutions have specialization or have already done a tremendous amount of work in these fields, and we're just going to bring that into the E3A format. Okay, I should turn on my webcam right now so people realize that this is not how you're being addressed right now. But another component when we talk about support that we're very excited to try through the new Western Sarah grant is a Skype an expert. Uh, platform. It could be Google Plus an expert, it could be FaceTime an expert, it could be something else an expert for that matter, just simply phone a friend. But it's rooted in the fact that the E3A curriculum is really designed to empower field educators, natural resource professionals, conservation districts, whoever, to provide energy programming and to have this expertise provided in ready-made lesson plans. Now, my background is in energy, and if you ask me to go out and do a presentation on range or perhaps weeds of the west or something along that lines, I could probably get the book and stumble through a 15, 20, maybe even a 30-minute presentation and not make too big of a fool of myself. But if someone at the end of that presentation started to ask difficult questions, well, guess what? I would be in a lot of trouble and I would be very uncomfortable using that material. So to address some of these issues, we've decided to try this Skype and Expert function. And the basic idea is that you can have, uh, we'll provide equipment and also a protocol, which is perhaps most important, for having a specialist attend a programming from afar. I'll just use Wyoming as an example. If someone wanted to offer a presentation on microhydro or something like that, able to go through the 
steps in the folder, but when they get to the questions, they want to show that, hey, the University of Wyoming actually cares about the outer reaches of the state, so we've got a specialist, perhaps it's me, sitting in on the presentation involved. It can be an evening presentation, noon presentation, whatever. We can work with technology there. And then at that point, if there's questions or other things that we wanted to co-present, well, we'd bring in a <clears throat> bring in the specialist through the Skype and expert function. And ideally, we may just sit there quietly and support you through the whole process, but we want to make sure that people know that there is support behind folks who decide to adopt this programming effort. And we'll work with other states to set up a similar module as well. Other things ongoing. We recognize that media resources are very important. We don't want just we do not want to just have static sheets in the E3A curriculum. So with the new grant, we'll, we've agreed to provide videos to support existing folders. Uh, we've yet to decide on the specific topic, so if people have some feedback on information that they'd really like to see in video, we have about eight or ten that we are considering, but a detailed series where you can drop videos into the presentation where it's nice to have a visual representation of some of these energy technologies. For instance, a brief discussion about how an anaerobic digester works, where you actually get to see an anaerobic digester, or understanding when you're talking about a water resource in microhydro, hey, what does one cubic feet per second actually look like? Well, we're going to design videos that can be dropped into the presentations and also provided as standalone resources on the website. And that actually leads me to the website. And we are going through a redesign. And actually, it's a redesign and simplification. We recognize that the E3A can't be all things to all people. So the emphasis on the redesign is that the E3A4U.info website, which is still up and live, has new information being added to it, will be designed for field educators, not the general public. If the general public has questions, we hope that they go to the individual state extension office, NRCS, wherever, for energy information. And we want the E3A4U site to be available for educators. So we'll still share the sheets there, We'll have access password protected so you can get into presentations. The link to buy kits, which hopefully Mike will talk about here shortly, uh, will be there. And also the ability to download presentations and other things. It'll be designed to get information to the hands of field educators, the people who are going to teach these resources. And on there, we'll also have the ability to have set programming. So if you want to do something with Facebook, Twitter, we'll have, once again, ready-made plans off the website so you can get out and get that information through social media. And that project's currently underway. We've got a shadow site being built at UW that does simplify the website. We're keeping the format. We actually like the website very much. We're just recognizing that with upkeep, we can't serve both sets of clientele, and we want to make sure that we serve our field educators first and foremost. Webinars. Well, I promise that moving forward, they will go smoother than this one, and this actually went much smoother this morning when we tried it. But there's two types of webinars that we're going to offer over the coming year. One is a webinar such as this, program resource sharing webinars is what we're calling them. And if you want to break that down, it's a 35,000 foot view of extension programming. So here we're just offering one level of curriculum that is available to be able to teach on energy. Moving forward, we can have things like featuring state extension energy programming, ag energy audits, agency partnership opportunities. So we're talking about big picture items. Now the other aspect, and this was actually feedback from the previous webinar series, we're also going to provide technical shorts is what we're calling them. Now I, I admit that maybe that provides a different mental image. Perhaps these are uh, you know geeky shorts for playing basketball in. But when we describe technical shorts, what we're looking to do is take a very specific topic, spend 20 minutes talking about it, and have 10 minutes of questions. And we'll set that up for the second Tuesday of every month. For instance, on March 11th, we're going to talk about changes to the federal small hydropower regulations. That's a topic that may or may not be of interest to folks, and we want to emphasize that these are resources where, hey, I've got a specific interest in that. I recognize that I want to be an expert in my community on a topic. Well, things that happened recently in Congress make it so that 
Federal energy regulator, excuse me, federal small pot hydropower regulation has been greatly simplified and it changes how we look at projects. Well, this is what we want to explain to folks and provide a chance for feedback and questions. And then we'll move along, for instance, USDA incentives, e, you know, read the farm bill there, variable frequency drives for irrigation, so very specific topics. And once again, those will be the second Tuesday of every month from 1 to 1.30 Mountain Standard Time. Trainings. Yes, that is underdog there. We recognized in the past that the E3A trainings that were held up in Montana and Montana State at the Weatherization Center were very successful and very well attended. And this is something that we wanted to continue. But in the proposal, we acknowledge that many states can't send field educators away for two, three days to go learn about energy. So here we're going to do a different model. We're going to take the show on the road to provide training for the E3A curriculum. So you understand, one, if we have to, we'll go through the basics of energy, each of the technology, but also a more lively discussion on how these need to be taught and also how to customize these resources in individual states. For instance, Art Nash up in Alaska will be, has invited me up there in April and we'll talk about E3A, how to customize it for Alaska, we'll talk about how the curriculum works, and then they can take it from there. And we recognize that this is just an opportunity to reduce travel costs where having one person travel and sending a whole bunch of people down to Montana or Wyoming improves the efficiency. So in essence, UW and MSU will come to you to help you understand what's available with the E3A training and if it suits your needs and if it's something that you can customize to suit your needs because we recognize the more entities that are involved, the more vibrant and dynamic this curriculum can be moving forward. Collaboration. Now, I, I'm just joking with the smug assessment of collaboration on the right there. <clears throat> but we do recognize that individual land-grant institutions have different expertise, as evidenced by New Mexico State University and University of Nebraska providing information for folders to the E3A curriculum. <clears throat> we want to continue to reach out to other entities that have curriculum so we can improve the E3A curriculum, change it where necessary, we're very open to that, and see how people are using it. For instance, the Northeast, there's a Farm Energy IQ project, and they will be building very specific models related to energy efficiency. We're going to see if there's a chance to work with them to see if there's curriculum that can be integrated into the E3A model. And the other thing that we're working on is we recognize right now there are states out there across the country that are using the E3A curriculum, but we really don't have a place to share improvements, if you will. So if a state like Missouri improves and enhances a module, well, how do they get that out to other folks? Now, we can do it through our informal connections and extensions, which is how we often do things. We are trying to bring it into the e-extension fold. And we want to integrate information into both I should mention both the home and farm energy community of practice. See if we can come up with a platform for <clears throat> new information to be shared. This is how we're teaching it. This is what we uh, tweaked when we got the InDesign files and adapted it to our home state. Because we do recognize that without that collaboration, any curriculum is going to become static and stale. One of the last things is we recognize that feedback is important here, and we emphasize, of course, with any Western SARE project, that feedback and evaluation is very important. So we need to know what works, what doesn't work for field educators, conservation districts, and others. And from that, the E3A team will work to incorporate those changes into the curriculum so it is dynamic and it falls the needs that you see in your community. So with that, I don't know, Tori, are you back uh, back with us? I am, and what we did is we moved Mike upstairs to my computer, so he's just going to finish his presentation from my computer, which will hopefully show you the slides. So I'll take control okay, so back. Okay, so keep here. attending. You're not done yet. This isn't the closing slide. Thank you, Tori. Yeah. Oops. Are people seeing those slides? Milt, do you see... The self-contained toolkit contest? Yes, I do. Okay, I'm going to hand the microphone over to Mike. Well, hello again, everyone. 
Yeah, I recognize a lot of names on uh, of the viewers today, and I uh, do not recognize some others, which uh, you know uh, helps me determine who has kits or who's been participating, you know, you know, in the past. For for those that have been participating, the remainder of the information that I'm going to go through, you've uh, uh, you if you have a toolkit, you're very very familiar with uh, these components. And uh, uh, we, uh, uh, the real tangible part of E3A is the toolkit that, uh, that we distribute. And those resources that uh, uh, Milt mentioned uh, that are on the way, that will be available later on in, uh, uh, in the year, uh, they'll be in the toolkit. Uh, but uh, for those that are not familiar with the toolkit uh, contents right now, uh, it's really a rich set of uh, self-guided and self-contained resources. Uh, it is designed in such a way to, uh, uh, as what uh, we like to call a grab-and-go uh, kit. There is a user's guide that is uh, full of uh, programming materials. Uh, which I'll show you a little bit of uh, the uh, technology folders that uh, 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 deal with small renewable energy uh, systems, uh, two that deal with uh, efficiency, one on home energy and the other one uh, with, uh, with farm energy. Uh, you see a spread there on that uh, slide of uh, you know, fact sheets, folders that uh, uh, fit into a nicely designed uh, uh, kit. Uh, the design of the curriculum, it's meant to uh, uh, really, you know, jump in wherever you can. Jump in wherever your, uh, your clients are at. Uh, jump in wherever you feel comfortable. But, you know, we really encourage folks to remind uh, consumers that uh, many of the, you know, the technologies are only as good as the placement in the, uh, in the sequence of conservation, you know, and efficiency. Certainly we know that with uh, uh, residential construction, uh, existing homes, and you know, and so forth, and renewables that are uh, meant to be used with uh, with home energy and even farm energy. That uh, there's a need to start, you know, at uh, you know, at a basic level, uh, looking at the assessment of uh, you know the situation and uh, see what can be done on a conservation basis and efficiency uh, level and then, uh, of course, alternative energy. So uh, there's many of these pyramids that do exist uh, across the country. This one is uniquely designed for you know, exploring energy efficiency and alternatives. Um, and the, the toolkit and the folders and the fact sheets are, uh, make reference to this action pyramid. So, uh, what do you get when you uh, get a toolkit? Uh, you get programming folders. Uh, those uh, uh, eight programming folders on uh, on content, and then in addition to that, of course, as they are developed, uh, the whether it be you know the wood heat uh, piece uh, that's coming out, uh, uh, the, uh, the the mobile home. Uh, folder that is finished, they will be uh, in there. These uh, folders are, um, are lesson guides of sorts. They you know, guide the instructor uh, on uh, the information, how to proceed as far as the format and, and the content. Uh, in each of the folders, there are, depending on the uh, subject, there's a variety of fact sheets. These fact sheets, uh, for those that are using uh, the website and have access to the website, these fact sheets are available as PDFs, but for planning and if you want to get these hard copy, they are available through uh, a Montana State University Extension Store. Uh, but here you have an example of one of the fact sheets, and which is characteristic of fact sheets throughout the you know the folders. Um, you will find in in total right now there are uh, 
at least 80 different fact sheets. Now that hopefully won't scare anybody, but uh, uh, but I want to emphasize, you know, this is self-guided and self-contained. All of the materials that you need are there. In this particular lesson that deals with solar hot water applications, that folder, you'll see that on the left-hand side it has seven steps. That would also indicate that there are seven fact sheets that deal with this particular topic. So it's uh, uh, very easy to, to use. They're very colorful in, uh, in, in their design. Uh, uh, we've gotten very, very good feedback from folks that have used these. Uh, uh, as a grab-and-go lesson, uh, there are lesson plans. These are suggested lesson plans that uh, walk you through a basic script as well as what materials to, to use. All of the materials are coded, so you'll see a code number for a fact sheet or an evaluation form. Uh, and keep in mind, this is, this is a guide. It's not a requirement that anybody use the materials as they have been designed. However, after uh, um, the design element, the uh, doing a number of uh, uh, training, train the trainer programs and so forth, I would say these are uh, time tested. They have been used. Uh, uh, if uh, you as an educator or someone uh, in your program does not feel comfortable presenting the information or you do not have that capacity with uh, your extension uh, program, here is an opportunity. Each of the lessons has, has a guest speaker form. And it's uh, what this form is. It just guides you as the facilitator to uh, uh, work with someone that does have the expertise and the knowledge. Uh, so it helps both the educator and the presenter uh, essentially uh, plan together. Uh, the speaker will know uh, what uh, the expectations are, you know, and so forth. Uh, they'll know the time, the location, obviously, and uh, the length of time and you know how how to proceed uh, again that's an option for folks to to use this uh, there's press and promotional tools you know uh, in uh, in the toolkit uh, things that uh, you know obviously need to be customized but you have some templates there that you can uh, utilize and of course uh, we are interested NIF is in, interested in uh, you know what we like to call what's the big deal you do all this work but uh, what's the outcome what's the impacts of you know of what you're doing so we do have some tools in the kit on the website that help with the evaluation uh, very very important aspect and uh, uh, while this is uh, you know, a little bit later in our slides today, I want to encourage everyone to be thinking about evaluations, metrics, and uh, measures, you know, from the get-go, from the very early stages of, uh, of planning their, their program. So from these pieces, you can see that uh, uh, it is self-guided. It is self-contained. Uh, but uh, you know, early on, uh, we got the question about customization. You know, uh, what uh, what we do in Montana and Wyoming as cold climate states is uh, you know perhaps uh, a little bit different than uh, uh, Florida. I think it is uh, New Mexico. Uh, uh, Milt is going up to Alaska in a couple of months. That's different than cold climate of, of Montana. And so what about customizing these materials? Uh, uh, we allow that. We want to encourage people rather than you know, spending uh, uh, all the time to reinvent the wheel. Uh, maybe you can put some different spokes on it, different tires on it, but uh, you, know, you can customize the materials that, that we have with a state license agreement. Uh, that is with MSU and, uh, and, and Wyoming. 
And we have several states that have done that, Minnesota, Tennessee, Florida, New Mexico, Missouri, uh, North Carolina. This uh, agreement is an agreement between institutions that uh, it's a good faith agreement predominantly that uh, you have the right to modify and amend our electronic files uh, uh, through this agreement and uh, share that with us and uh, uh, so that the integrity of the program is still uh, intact. If you're in, interested in that in any way, shape, or form, you know, please get in touch with Tori, and uh, uh, she'll work with our technology transfer office on campus uh, to work you through that, that process. And if you uh, want uh, just to see what this agreement looks like without any contractual uh, um, requirements, feel free to ask her for that. And if you do have some very special needs uh, that may not be defined on that agreement, also let her know and we'll see what, uh, what we can do. Okay, the website, I think Milt, uh, I was at a disadvantage not hearing everything, but uh, uh, I think he uh, probably went through parts and pieces of the website, which is, uh, you know, under a, uh, a modification right now. Uh, some really great uh, uh, changes. Uh, I think we have had a wonderful website. Uh, uh, which certainly brings to your desktop all of the uh, the materials that we've talked about, the PDFs of uh, fact sheets, and you know, what this uh, these materials look like. Uh, on uh, this is uh, uh, what the current uh, site homepage uh, may look like. It's changing uh, uh, daily, so don't be surprised if some of this is moved around in some of the um, uh, the the toolbar is changed a little bit. But one thing I do really want to encourage you to is go to this site and one piece that you'll find is a video. It's a five minute video that does highlight uh, all the parts and pieces of this uh, uh, of the program. Uh, if you're still uh, you know, on the fence, not uh, you know, sure if this is something that you want to do or you want to share E3A, you know, uh, with a partnership group or you know, with your administration. Uh, bring that uh, video up, and uh, it does a very nice job in a short way of uh, explaining what E3A is, and also uh, has uh, uh, some information from uh, a couple of our partners uh, on, that, uh, on that site. Um, uh, the website also does uh, uh, get you access to a toolkit. Uh, the toolkit is ordered through the website. It goes through our Montana State University Extension store, online store. And uh, when you go to, there will be a more predominant button on the website in order to access you know the store and uh, current uh, cost of that is ninety eight dollars that is postage paid you know to you uh, uh, there of course as materials are added uh, the box uh, you know uh, cost you know will uh, slightly you know increase to accommodate that uh, but all of this your one stop shopping at least initially can be the you know the website. Um, access to the teaching materials. Uh, uh, we, uh, this is, of course, a public website, and perhaps Milt already mentioned this, that uh, you know, some of these uh, materials are password protected, uh, the PowerPoints and so forth. Uh, those, uh, ex it is designed for extension people, as I was saying earlier, uh, and so you know we we want to assure that the materials are being used by educators, uh, and that respect you know the quality, the professionalism, the non-bias, research-based nature of the materials. So by contacting Tori, uh, she will set you up with a username and password and you will have then access to, uh, uh, to those files. 
uh, those that have already participated, you've already been uh, ex uh, assigned a uh, user name you know, and password. So uh, I, uh, I'm going to uh, finish off with uh, um, uh, Tori's contact information. Uh, obviously, uh, she, uh, 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 she's your go-to person for uh, uh, coordination and so forth. Uh, uh, MILT is uh, really taken a lion's share of the work on new initiatives, new materials, you know, and so forth. And uh, so uh, staying in touch with uh, Tori at this email address and phone number, you know, it would be great. Uh, and for those that may be asking what happened to uh, uh, Sarah Hamlin, uh, unfortunately she uh, moved off of uh, uh, her extension uh, position and uh, 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 so she's no longer with uh, with extension and uh, uh, Tori is uh, 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 taking the uh, the lead on her uh, position so with uh, with that uh, well I guess we're already done with part two so I think what we're going to do is open the uh, chat uh, and the system for uh, for questions. I'm going to turn it back over to um, Tori and she can facilitate that. Yeah, I think we'll give Mike just a minute to um, jet back down to his computer so that he can hear your questions. Um, and this is the part I've kind of been worried about is managing all this when the hands pop up. Um, but I guess go ahead um, we have a question from Elizabeth Gall, and she says, what is the timeline for having the solar youth activities available? Uh, Milt, do you want to field that? Sure. And that's, that's one that actually the timeline is going to be very soon. We have an edited version in hand, and it just needs to go to our graphics designers. Uh, they have a, a fair queue to get things done, but I would anticipate you'll see it on the website within a month. Okay, and Mary, I'm probably going to butcher some names here, sorry, Mary Reggie uh, wonders what the, um, approximately how much will the new packets cost? <laughs> That's a very good question. And it won't increase significantly for any of those that uh, uh, understand the the original project. They aren't a they certainly aren't a profit maker or anything for Montana State. They uh, just recoup the profit. I would anticipate that no more than twenty to thirty dollars added for the additional folders. But once again, if you don't want to pay for the glossy sheets, if you will, you can print everything online and that'll be available for free. And actually, uh, the only thing that you would then have to order are the individual the folders themselves, the actual the container for the the sheets. You can't. We haven't figured out a good way to allow people to print that out yet. Okay. But the new grant does have a little bit of funding to underwrite printing as well. We just won't do print as many items because we recognize that the sheets are changing and evolving quickly. And Mary's follow-up is, are the folders the same as the packets? <laughs> yeah, this is uh, oh, in the order of operation. So... The best way to describe it, and actually, if I were really hip to it, can I try to turn on my webcam? Sure. All right, we'll see how this goes. Add one more complexity to this. Hello, everybody. I assume you can see me. So what we have is a box, and that's the Exploring Energy Efficiency and Alternative Curriculum. And then in the box are these folders. And that, that would be what you may be calling a packet, Mary. And in the folder are the individual sheets. So that's a breakdown. The box contains everything. The individual folders on the subject matter, I just happened to grab biodiesel. And then the individual sheets are contained within the folder. And I might add, this is Mike, uh, you know, the value of the folder in addition to it being a container is that it, it is a fact sheet in itself. Uh, there is, there's content you know, within these folders, but they are heavy duty. They, are, they have a side pocket that uh, holds and encloses all the, you know, the fact sheets. 
So it, it does uh, serve several purposes. But PDFs are the fact sheets. You can download those from the website, the folders you still, and the box. Uh, you'll have to get those if you want them uh, out of uh, the bookstore. Uh, Mary says, oh, thank you. I have the original kit. Just curious to the additional cost. So, Oh, the additional cost for each uh, individual folders. We'll, okay. we'll contact everybody, but we are, once again, the new grant is uh, underwriting some of the printing there as well, so we'll keep them as low cost as possible. Any other questions? I guess not. All right, well, Milt or Mike, anything you'd like to say in wrap-up? I would just uh, thank everyone for their participation today. Look forward to the next webinar uh, uh, coming up. And uh, uh, watch that website, because that website is uh, changing uh, you know, uh, quickly on various things. And uh, you know, stay in touch with us. Likewise, thank you for attending. And uh, don't hesitate to contact with any questions. Okay, and uh, thanks for bearing with us through the technical glitches. Uh, hopefully I will n be a little better of a troubleshooter next time. <laughs> you did well. Thank you. Yes, okay, thank thanks you, everyone. Bye.